on the Aztec Sports Network from Learfield Source. This is the Aztec Coaches Show. Ball back to the near side. Touchdown, Aztec! The Aztec Coaches Show is brought to you by Claim Jumper La Mesa. Welcome to the Aztec Coaches Show. Now, here's your host, Chris Ello. Hey, it's Wednesday night. It must be Claim Jumper Grossmont Center in La Mesa. Time for the Aztec Coaches Show. Let's hear it, people. Along with the coach, Brady Hoke, Chris Ello with you for the next hour talking Aztec football and, of course, uh, getting ready for uh, the Saturday game coming up in Fort Worth against TCU. Uh, we will take your phone calls. Uh, if you'd like to join us tonight, uh, 858-569-8255. Toll-free number, 800-600-COGO, 800-600-5646. We'll also take some questions here from the throng that has gathered here at Claim Jumper to visit with us on this Wednesday evening and uh, celebrate a 7-2 and two start to this 2010 season. Yeah, I think that's worth taking a second to roll around in your mind. Uh, San Diego State fans, 7-2, and two, it's been a while. In fact, 15 years since the Aztecs have been 7-2. and two, So uh, I think before we get to anything else, Coach, uh, congratulations on a fourth consecutive victory the other night, knocking off Colorado State. I got to find this. I'm congratulating uh, you. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to catch no, you by surprise there. Uh, no, our <laughs> kids played uh, well together as a team. I mean, we, we believe me, we didn't play great uh, by any stretch. But I thought when you look at it and you saw how they hung in there together and <clears throat> how our defense uh, really uh, carried us through the first half and really played a heck of a football game overall. You know, we had the one drive late that uh, – uh, as a defensive coach, that bothers the heck out of you. But uh, I thought, and then our offense you know, put some drives together, and uh, we, we, were, we were fortunate enough with five turnovers to win the football game. But at the same time, it shows you a lot about the character of the kids on this team. Yeah, I think there's a couple ways to look at it. We talked about it right after the game. I mean, uh, and you said if you have five turnovers, a lot of times you really don't deserve to win. But just because you have five turnovers doesn't mean – you still can't keep fighting and scratching and find a way to win. Right. And, and so there's something good to be said about that. Well, there's no question, you know, and, and it's uh, this is a learning pro process, you know, and we're learning how to uh, do things as a program and as a team and uh, getting closer together as a team and believing each other and playing 60 minutes. And that's all part of uh, what you do when you, uh, you want to win championships. And, you know, a week ago up in Wyoming, our offense scored 48 points, and we needed all those points. And this week, our defense held us in there and, and did a, a nice job uh, uh, in a lot of different ways. But, you know, at the end of the day, you win the football game. You know, the thing is, is and you keep telling us every week, you know, every single game is a, is a game into itself, and it's a game. We just focus on trying to win that game. And you know, the fans and, and the media, you know, we want to look ahead and we want to, well, you got TCU and Utah coming up down the road. So let's just get through this New Mexico, Wyoming, Colorado State thing. And then we'll get ready for, you know, TCU and those games. But, you know, these last three games, I think, proved to everybody that, you know, every single game, you got to do a lot of things to win a football game. And it doesn't really matter what, always matter what the record is of the opponent. I mean, a lot of things went against you in uh, in New Mexico. Same thing in Wyoming. And then uh, even last week against Colorado State, your kids seem like they're still fighting and learning, you know, how to get it done even when the, uh, you know, never mind what the record of the opponent is. Well, you know, one thing we talk about every day is improving, improving, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, how you practice, your practice habits, how you uh, fundamentals with the techniques and all those kind of things. And, you know, every guy on that team has something that we can do better. Every coach on the team, we have something we can coach better or mentor better or whatever it might be. But, you know, that that's where it all starts. And, and you know, we want to improve. And, and we've said before, you know, that uh, you win championships in November, and this is an opportunity to go do that. Well, we're going to certainly talk about what's coming up this weekend. But uh, a couple of more things I thought, Coach, from the Colorado State game. You know, the first thing was – 25 minutes into that game 
Uh, it was almost incredible. But they had had the ball for 22 of those 25 minutes. You guys had had it for three minutes. Right. Uh, you had had uh, two one-play drives, both of which were turnovers. And yet your defense kept you in there. And you looked up at the scoreboard and it was six to nothing. And, and I kind of thought in a lot of ways you guys might have won that game last Saturday night when you were losing six to nothing because you had, you had every right to be down by a lot more than that. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what, uh, you know, teams do. They, they uh, stand up for each other and they complement each other. And defensively, you know, Colorado State going into the game was averaging 189 yards a game in rushing the football. And uh, at the end of the day, I think they had 31 yards rushing and 27, 28 attempts. And there was some negative plays in there. There was, uh, uh, our, they had the ball in good field position, you know, across the 50 yard line and held them to uh, field goals. And, and that's a big part of uh, uh, what a defense has to do. And as we talk defensively, you know, if we've got to play you know, 60 minutes the whole time. Well, that's what we're there for, and that's what we need to do. You know, uh, you talked about the the, the, the the sacks you had against Colorado State. I think there were five, and there were five the week before against Wyoming. You might have even had some more, but uh, Carter Samuels, the Wyoming quarterback, was able to elude the pressure a few times. Seems to me that that's an area here. The last couple of games, while maybe a lot of people are paying attention to some other things, you're getting pressure on the quarterback the last couple of games better, I think, than you have all season long. <laughs> well, Your D-line, the linebackers, maybe understanding you know, Rocky's blitz packages, but you guys seem to be getting it to the quarterback and getting, as you said, those negative plays. I think you had 13 tackles for losses in that game against Colorado State. A, a, you know, a, a team that leads the nation averages about six or seven of those a game. You had 13 in one game. And you, I don't think you can just overlook that stuff. You guys are doing some good things. Well, that's a big part of the defense, you know, and what we want to do and uh, with Rocky's defense and how he coaches it. And, and, you know, there's been some games where we've been uh, dry on uh, getting to the quarterback and not as uh, uh, proficient as we'd like to be. But, you know, I think, uh, you know, a guy like Miles Burris is doing a great job at Ernie Lawson's. Uh, starting to get a little more attention uh, from people and what he's done. So all those things are part of it. But, uh, you know, the kids are playing hard together. And I think Rocky also and the guys on defense are coming up with a pretty good plan every week. Well, that and the fact that you have played so many kids on defense and you did it to us again. Uh, this was necess uh, necessitated by injury. You had B.J. Williams go out of the ball game. And here comes number 93 in the backfield, making a sack, making a tackle for loss. And there go Ted and I up in the booth, scrambling to our fourth string depth chart to find Larry Gibbs. Yep. You keep getting performances <laughs> like this. Uh, the week before, it was Gabe Lemon in Wyoming. And uh, we talked about Trujillo did some, did some good things for you in New Mexico. It is a team defense in the truest sense of the word. Well, you know, and the one thing about uh, Larry, in fact, uh, uh, to be honest with you, we call him Gibby, and I forget his first name sometimes. But <laughs> Gibby goes out there every day, and he works his tail off. He's a guy who's uh, walked on uh, the program from the Inland Empire and uh, does great academically. He's a smart football player. He's uh, undersized as heck, but he is a tough guy who has good technique and good fundamentals. And, and it goes back to he loves his teammates, and he doesn't want to disappoint them. And, you know, it's the old saying, you know, one man goes down, another's got to come up. And he understands that part of it and understands what he has to do. Offensively, uh, certainly it was a struggle at times. Um, you did not really get the ball down the field to uh, Vincent Brown and DeMarco Sampson in this game. Almost opposite of the conversation we had a week ago after the Wyoming game, which was, well, you never really were able to get Ronnie Hillman uh, unleashed in that Wyoming game. Well, okay, DeMarco Sampson and Vincent Brown went crazy. Uh, this week, you couldn't get the ball to your big guns on the outside. Um, and maybe you can discuss a little reason for that. But Ronnie Hillman came back for you, and he got loose. And once he got cranked up in the second half, I kind of thought that's when you guys took over the ball game. Well, you know, it, and I think that's part of it, you know. And, and then uh, and the other part of it, you know, and they, they, they didn't want to give up the big play. They weren't going to do it. They were going to play – some sort of uh, uh, um, too deep coverage and have the safeties deep or they were going to play a little bit of quarter, quarter, half or old cowboy coverage. And 
uh, they weren't going to let us get behind them at the same time then they were uh, only leaving seven guys in the box and so when you do that you're going to pay one way or the other if you can block at the point of attack and you have a back like Ronnie when he gets going you know it's a it's a big positive for us so you know but that all comes from maybe what happened the week before yeah. how their mindset is how they want to defend you well the week before Wyoming wanted to take away the run and the play action pass hurt him so you know, when, when you look at it, you know, it, it uh, Alan Etz and our offensive staff do a great job. Ryan in the second half was 11 for 15. So I think there's a, a lot of positives on the second half of how we played football. It doesn't seem like there's a game that goes by where I don't uh, just kind of marvel at a, at a call that Al Borges comes up with. And, uh, and what proved to be the winning touchdown in that ball game the other night, you guys ran a Really, basically, it was a middle screen to your fullback. Brandon Sullivan turned around at the line of scrimmage. Nobody was expecting the ball to be thrown there. And then he dives into the end zone. And it just, to me, the more comfortable, the more we see, the more this playbook is opening up and more of these little options are available to you. <laughs> Sullivan's got five touchdowns in two games. And I think if you were scouting the Aztecs, he probably would be maybe the fifth or sixth guy you would talk about on your offensive team. I mean, well, that's how deep you are, and that's how well you guys are executing in terms of getting everybody involved. Well, yeah, and it was a great call by Al, and it was, uh, you know, when you watch it on film, I mean, those linebackers, because we line up in that set and we run the outside stretch play, and he cuts the end man on the line of scrimmage down. And, and so when, once that action started, that play action, uh, those that inside linebacker and those two linebackers, man, they they went and it was uh, uh, the one coaching point that you know people would miss is the quarterback needs to stay straight off the line, okay? Because if he fades to the right at all, he's going to get hit in the mouth. And uh, <laughs> Ryan did it ex uh, perfectly and came off the line, and it's a quick pop. And you got to get rid of it quick, and you know. And then uh, I think Sully's. Uh, um, his effort getting into the, the end zone was special also. One last thing on the game on Saturday night, and I know everybody's kind of itching to look ahead here and talk about TCU, um, but Ryan Lindley's performance in that game, and, and, and I asked you after the game, was his ankle bothering him a little bit? He looked like he was off on a few throws. The thing, again, that has impressed me about Ryan and, and all your guys is after that play is made on the goal line where he loses the ball and the kid runs it back 90 yards, I mean, that's a game-losing play. You know, when you get seven that you should have and then the other guys get seven, that can be very tough to come back from. But it happens in the second, third quarter. you still got a lot of game left. Discuss how Ryan Lindley and your offense kind of goes back to work and how you are able to get them focused on that next drive now, which, by the way, after this guy runs 90 yards and turns the game around, you guys take the ball and go 80 yards for a touchdown. That's not easy to do. Well, it's not, but it's part of, uh, I think it's, it's part of the belief that we have in each other. And uh, that, that's, you know, you know, in any team sport, any business, any group that's working for a cause, whatever it might be, you got to believe in each other and you got to trust each other. And, you know, that play happened and, and you know, defensively, uh, you know, you could get down, but, you know, it's 60 minutes of football. I mean, there's 60 minutes that you have the opportunity and the privilege to go out and play this game. And so you've got to go out there so that your your, your, your teammates you see the respect that you have. And, you know, our offense got right back together. There was no, uh, uh, you know, hanging their heads and all that because you can't. you got to go forward and, you know, lean forward and take that next step. Well, that uh, resulted in another victory, 24-19, San Diego State over Colorado State. 7-2, and two, my friends. That is the record for the red and black for the first time since 1995. Now uh, we go for 8-2. and two. And uh, Brady Hoke, uh, well, he said it all year long. Our goal is to win the Mountain West Conference Championship. Going to have to, going to have a chance to take a, a rather large stride toward that goal coming up on Saturday in Fort Worth. We'll talk about the game coming up against TCU when we come back to the Claim Jumper. Thanks for joining us, everybody. The Aztec Coaches Show from Learfield Sports and AM600 Cobra. Here we go, people. 
Aztec Coaches Show, Claim Jumper, Grossmont Center, La Mesa, Chris Ello, along with the coach, Brady Hope. You folks uh, that are here tonight, uh, get some questions ready. We're going to do questions for the coach in our next segment. Also on the phones at 858-569-8255. All right, TCU, you're playing them Saturday. I think we're all kind of aware of that. Um, you know, I mean, look, they're good. I mean, it's pretty, pretty obvious that they're, they're an awfully good football team, the ranking, et cetera, what they did to Utah last week. Do you go into this game with your team and say, hey, guys, this is a big game, you know, maybe a little extra focus, a little extra this or that, or as a coaching staff, do you go into this game and say, let's treat it just like every other game? Well, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to play on a 100-yard field and 53-point-something yards wide, and it is another game. And, and they're, they're a tremendous football team. Gary Patterson's done a great job. They have great tradition. Uh, they, they uh, have done a great job of recruiting. They have athletes on the field. Well, you know what? Uh, uh, when we play as a team and we play together, we're a pretty good football team. And so it's uh, for us, you know, it's always more about us, you know, than it is them. You know, I mean, do you, you know what they do offensively and defensively. You know their personnel. You study that stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's got to be us and how we've worked this week and, how we practiced yesterday, how we started it uh, on Monday with kids coming in who, who wanted to watch tape and do what they, they do to get prepared and how we practice today, how we finish off the week and uh, the attention to detail that you have to have, you know, and, it, and that's weekly. And, and for, our, you know, for our kids, you know, this is a little bit of a learning process, you know, and uh, part of that learning press, process is it's going to be, the last game in their stadium before they implode it and they think $110 million are putting into the new stadium. And and so it, it, it's going to be loud. It's going to be packed. They're bringing back 400 lettermen, you know, to be part of the celebration and all that. Well, you know, big deal. We've got to go in there and have poise. We've got to go in there and play for each other and play together. And, you know, we'll see what happens. It'll be fun. I mean, you, you, you want to put yourself in this position the play for championships in November. And we've talked about it since day one. So let's go have fun with it and go 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 play our best football. When you look at them on tape, I mean, look, we'll talk just a little bit more about them and then back to you. But I mean, do, is there something that jumps out at you to where, you know, you say, well, okay, this is, you know, one of the reasons that they're, they're as good as they are. Is it speed? Is it toughness? Is it, do they have a little of everything? They look like they can throw it, run it, stop the run, stop the pass. Their special teams look pretty good. Is there anything that they're doing special that, you know, other teams can't do? Well, no, you covered it. I mean, you uh, just covered <laughs> the whole gamut. But, yeah. you know, from an offensive perspective, them offensively, you know, I think Andy Dalton's playing tremendous football. I mean, the game he played last year, uh, their quarterback last week at Utah was as good and clean as a game a quarterback can play. And he really played good football. And, you know, they have good athletes, you know, and you look at their offensive line. You know, uh, Larry Gibbs is going to line up at times against a 6'5", 355-pound offensive tackle who is a good player. He'll be an NFL guy. Uh, but, you know, and Larry's smaller than I am. So, <laughs> I mean, that tells you a little bit. But, but you know, they've got good players. And, and, and I, you know, I think Gary does a great job. His staff does a great job. Uh, they're coached well. I mean, they play with a purpose. Um, they they execute well, and they're good athletically. But, you know, it, it's they're gonna, it's still football, you know, and you still, you know, you're going out there and you're playing a game and you're playing and uh, uh, you're, you're, you're playing as hard as you can for 60 minutes, you know. Um, last year, you know, we, we played them here and we flinched. You know, we, we backed down. We backed down before the game started. And uh, the one thing I know about this team, they're not going to back down, you know. And we've had good uh, a good two days of practice. And, you know, when, when you play in these kind of games, it, 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 if they can't get ready hmm. to play in a game like this, then you got the wrong guys on your football team. And uh, I don't think we have the wrong guys on our football team. Is the message, the general message this week, Coach, as you get ready to play TCU, uh, again, focus on what you got to do. Focus on your job on every play and, and do your best not to focus on the fact that it's TCU. 
Yeah, I mean, you can't have distractions, you know, you know, yeah, how they act at night and how they do things. I mean, all those things are distractions. And, and you know, if you get uh, awed by their having a big crowd and 40, uh, uh, you know, former players and all that kind of stuff, that, hey, it, it's about us and what we do and how we want to do it and how we want to play for each other. And at the uh, end of the day, that's it. That that uh, That is it. And, you know, I know – as a coach, and I know how our coaches are, and I think I know our kids good enough that they want to play for each other and they don't want to let each other down. So they're going to put the time in and do what they have to do. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it. The kickoff is 1 o'clock Pacific time Saturday right here on AM600 Kogo. The Aztecs taking on third-ranked TCU. When we come back to Claim Jumper, we'll uh, open it up for some questions from our uh, audience here at the Claim Jumper. Also, the phones... 858-569-8255. You got a question? Something for the coach Brady Hoke. We'll take that next as the Aztec Coaches Show continues from Learfield Sports and AM600. Claim Jumper, Grossmont Center in La Mesa. We appreciate you listening and enjoying on AM600 Kogo. Also, GoAztecs.com, the web. But uh, more than that, we'd love to have you here every Wednesday night. The coach is here, and uh, we talk Aztec football and uh, we also got all the uh, amazing happy hour specials here, the mini tri-tip dips and everything else that all you guys out there are enjoying for like 2 or $3 a pop. Uh, Coach, you ready for some, uh, some questions? Yep. Yeah, we're going to go to the uh, phone lines first, and then we'll get to some of your questions here at the Claim Jumper. Our good friend Sergio is uh, in Florida, but uh, listening, to the game, or listening to the program on uh, the, uh, the web on AM600 Kogo. Sergio, you're on with Chris Ello and the coach, Brady Hoke. How are you? Hi, Chris. Hi, Coach. How are you doing? Sir Joe, how are you doing? Not bad. Uh, just uh, want to let you know we'll be out there in Texas to cheer the team and hope for, uh, hope for a win for the Aztec Nation. Hey, uh, we love that. That's great. Where in Florida are you? Uh, Tallahassee. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Well, we look forward to hopefully okay. meeting you. Okay, thank you. And uh, my question is... Uh, is there a reason why our, our games, uh, at least the last four games, have been that interesting or that close? I mean, uh, you know, some of the games over here end up like at a 1 in the morning or 2 in the morning, and and I've had to stay for this all 60 minutes to make sure our guys, you know, get the win and all that. Is there like a just a reason why we always, you know, be right there at the last minute to win all these games, or why are they so close? Are, are the, is the competition trying to, you know, to – to play us uh, to the max, or is there is there like a coincidence, or could you yeah, coach, go coach in on that? Coach, you're seven and two now, but you're not winning comfortably enough. Well, and, and, but you you've even mentioned that no, to me a couple of times in, yeah. in passing that we do have a tendency to make things a little more interesting. Right. Well, we, I like keeping Sergio up to one in the morning. <laughs> that's that's right. the first thing. That's but the key. Yeah. That that's not true, Sergio. No, I you know I it's just football. It's the way things happen. Uh, the bounce of the ball or whatever, believe me, uh, I think we all would like to uh, uh, feel a little uh, more comfortable probably in the latter minutes of a game. But, you know, the, the, the thing that I like about this team is that they've responded. And, and I can tell you, uh, I don't know if that would have been the same result a year ago. So, and, and that's a great question. Believe me, we're not trying to make it close. Uh <laughs> And, and uh, you know, the competition you have to give credit to. I think, you know, those kids are trying to. They're well coached. But, you know, we're, we're, we're making them interesting. All right. Thanks, Sergio. We'll see you uh, Saturday in, uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, for the football game. Um, anybody in here going to Fort Worth, Texas, for the football game? All right, a few people. Uh, we got to sneak a few red and black fans into the stadium Saturday. All right, uh, let's roll here of, uh, with the questions for the coach here at the Claim Jumper. Hi, Coach. I got, first, I, I want to give props to uh, Andrew Preston, okay? I, uh, I, I, every time I see that kid, man, I swear, that this guy is is uh, NFL uh, uh, prospect all the way, you know? And second thing is the athleticism of the defense Right where they they did they kept you guys in that game the first half man and uh, and, and and I was swearing uh, people that heard me saying somebody out there has got a hoodoo on us and we got to break it you know <laughs> you know but uh, but but also I uh, I know that uh, Chris said that uh, he he asked you about Lindley the thing 
that was bugging me was that it seemed like sometimes he went back on his plant foot. He wasn't really uh, uh, planted like he, he was supposed to, to to throw the ball, and the ball was coming up a little, you know, a little high on him and stuff. Uh, is he? I I didn't get the thing, but is he, is he uh, injured or slightly injured or something like that? Well, he, he had hurt his uh, uh, ankle up at Wyoming, but uh, he, he drove some balls in there. I mean, uh, we have the uh, you know the, the privilege of watching the game again on tape and doing all that and being critical of uh, good throws and bad throws, and every guy's going to have their pluses and minuses. But he had a heck of a lot more pluses than he did minuses and he really drove some balls in there and uh you know on on the on the fumble that they returned uh there wasn't a guy who gave a better effort and pushed off of both feet and both ankles and toes and everything else better than ryan did all right thank you let's move along let's get everybody in here uh questions for the coach uh, here at the claim jumper Yes, Chet. This How is Chet, you? and my question is, I've enjoyed having you in the room for evening meals on Wednesday. Is there any information that you can give us fans on the award dinner so we can have the players in the room when we have a meal? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a great question, and one I should probably know how to answer, but uh, food, I, I, I really don't want anybody know when that is. Ward's dinner. You got a game to coach uh, on Saturday. It, well, yeah. So I, I'm I'm way off the tick, but Chad, I think it's the second uh, weekend in s- December twelfth. December twelfth. December twelfth. Right, there you December go. December twelfth for the. For I the, knew it was sometime. I know one thing that you're gonna have a little tougher time than normal, maybe picking out who all the award winners are this year, and well, that's a good problem to have because. Uh, you got a lot of guys I can think of who could be in line for a bunch of stuff. All right, let's move along here quickly. Yes, sir. Questions for the coach here Hi. on the Aztec Coaches Show. Hi, Coach. Tim Jenkins. Uh, coach, I'd like you to discuss a little of the question of confidence, and that's an element of the game that's very important. And right now our defense probably has high confidence given the, the, the quality of the game they played. And the offense really came on strong the second half. So we have that, that, that confidence question with them. And then also... TCU's confidence. Here's a team that's they've won a lot all their games and maybe they're a little overconfident when we go into there. And does that become part of our game plan? Uh, you know, I you know, I can't that's a hard question to answer. I know one thing, upsets are in the mind of the favorite. I do know that, you know, and uh, coaching at Michigan eight years, believe me, and when, when we that happened to us, it was usually because uh, uh, eighteen to twenty two year olds they, they uh, you know, sometimes the press clippings or sometimes they just you know, think it's a little better. So, but I can't answer. You know, I think Gary. You know, they've been there before. They've been through it before. Uh, as far as our kids, I think every week they go out, and every week that uh, um, you know you turn the ball over five times and you find a way to win. I think that's something that sticks with you, and I think that's part of maturing as a football program and a football team. You know, coach, you kind of hit on something too a little earlier, and then a couple more questions, but. You talked about last year when you played TCU, and you felt you guys kind of gave in to them even before the game even started. And to me, that's going to be a crucial part of this game. People always say you got to get off to a fast start, uh, all that stuff. But to me, and I think you'll know right away, and, and hopefully you'll let TCU know right away, that it's going to be a little different this year. We don't plan on backing down this year, and that's something I know you want to establish. Right. Well, I mean, that's part of it. You know, the game's played really, you know, from – the, when the season starts and after you get done uh, uh, with your your summer and your winter conditioning, spring football, fall camp, it's from the neck up. I mean, this is a mental game. And uh, your your mental attitude, your mental toughness, your your intensity, your focus and, and what you have to do and how you prepare, that that's what it is. And, and uh, uh, you know, confidence being part of that and uh, how you feel about yourselves and who you are as a team. All right, uh, a couple more questions here. Claim Jumper jam-packed on a Wednesday night for the Aztec Coaches Show. Yes, sir. Hello, Coach. Uh, Love what you're doing. I like the way you're keeping the tight ends involved in the game. My question for you is uh, Anthony Miller, he played in the first game or two last year, and then he kind of dropped out of sight, and it seems he's obviously redshirting this year. Uh, What's his status? Is he going to stay with the program? Yeah, he should be. I mean, uh, you know, we uh, we – Right now, he's doing a great job down on our look team. 
Uh, he's doing those kind of things. Uh, you can only give the ball so many times and prepare so many guys. And, you know, Anthony, at the end of the day, is going to be a, going to be a fullback. And uh, so he's getting a little bigger. He's learning how to play that position a little bit. But, uh, you know, he's still with us. Thank you very much. Yeah, you got the running backs. Uh, Casey, you got him back in the ball game the other day. You still got Donald Brown, Ronnie Hillman. Uh, embarrassment of riches, Coach, at that running back position. Uh, next up, yes, sir. Hi, Coach. Uh, one question I have for you. I've been watching the TCU team for about the last three years, and obviously they have an incredible amount of team speed, and that's something that I have seen that the Aztecs until this year have not had. Do you think that's, especially on defense, do you think that's something that TCU is really special at as far as getting outside on defense? Well, you know, I think, it, you know, at the end of the day, it starts with recruiting and who you recruit. And I know, and Gary and I, you know, we've talked for probably 15, 16 years a lot to each other being defensive-minded guys. And uh, I know that uh, uh, Jerry Hughes, their great defensive end a year ago, uh, he was a tailback. They recruited him as a tailback. He was a tailback for probably two days. Then they moved him defensive end and bulked him up and got him in. You know, he had that kind of speed, and, and I think uh, we've done that with certain guys. And a uh, uh, guy like Leon McFadden, you know, uh, was a wide receiver when he came in here. But, you know, you need that speed defensively to be able, and sp particularly in this league, because you've got some uh, spread teams. So your matchups and, and those things are better. Yeah, it's, it is one of the interesting things about TCU, and they're not the only team that does this, but the fact that they've been successful – uh, is how many of their defensive players started out as running backs. I mean, guys that were just all recruited. It's like they recruited 30 running backs and then put 20 of them over on the defensive side of the ball, and it's worked out very well for, for TCU. All right, one last question here for the coach uh, here and uh, from the claim jumper. Yes. Hey, coach, uh, just quick question. So can we expect anything different on the defense, like package-wise, now that we're down two starters, like more blitzes? or? You know what? Uh, it, it really, because of... Uh, how we structure the defense and because of our ability to play a lot of guys, you know, throughout the, the, the course of the season, then there's been a, a lot of guys who have got, they've gotten a lot of reps and they've gotten a lot of experience, you know, and even though a guy like Larry Gibbs hasn't played a ton for us, but he's been with the program, he understands the, what we do. And, uh, you know, we, with, with being down two starters, we'll, uh, take uh, Nick Tenehoff and we'll play with a little bit of inside linebacker, the Mike linebacker, where Marcus plays and still rotate some on the outside. But, you know, it's a good question. But, you know, we're going to do what we do. And, and we got to do what we do because the kids know it. They have confidence in it. And so you've got to do that. If you, if you change drastically, then you're going to have a bunch of guys who uh, get par par uh, paralysis by analysis instead of playing football. Hey, good questions from everybody here at the Claim Jumper. Wanted to get out to the phones for one last question from our friend Ann in Oceanside listening on AM600 Coco. Ann, she's gone? Well, then we're going to take a break and come back. we got one final segment to go here with the coach. we got our Student Athlete of the Week, California Bank and Trust Student Athlete of the Week. So All right, everybody, on. fourth quarter, Claim Jumper. Let's go. Here we go. Chris Ello, the coach, Brady Hoke, Aztec Coaches Show. Saturday, Aztecs TCU coming up at 1 o'clock. want to remind you, uh, fans, also, Aztecs are back home a week from Saturday. That should be a pretty good game as well. Coach, do you know who you play the week after, TCU? Because well, I know, you, I know I, you focus on one game at a time. Well, I do know. Because you know that one? You said it earlier. I mentioned it earlier. Right. Yeah, it'll be Utah coming in here on the 20th, and uh, it's a 7 o'clock game. Uh, Wells Fargo, uh, Aztec Village opens at 5 Reminding all of you to tell everybody else, Aztec Warrior Walk 445. All right, a week from Saturday when the Aztecs host Utah. First 20,000 fans are going to get a number 34 Kirk Morrison jersey. Uh, Aztec football tickets start at just 11 bucks. So uh, we'll see you at uh, the next home game coming up a week from Saturday against Utah. That Kirk Morrison, man, we could use him this week against TCU. Cause that guy could tackle just about everybody. You yeah. got a couple of guys that are doing that, though. I mean, I just, I mean, I don't like to spotlight everybody because it's a team thing. But the way Miles Burris is playing right now, and I know your defense allows him to roam around a little bit, but 
Man, he's making some big plays for you. Uh, one of the questioners earlier talked about Andrew Preston, who's you know, learned a whole new position this year. Now he's picked off a couple of passes in the last two games. It's got to be satisfying just as a coach, uh, on just a personal level, to watch these kids get better and start really playing well. Well, you're right. I mean, that's, you know, part of, you know, their development uh, uh, from an athletic standpoint, you know, the, uh, watching them uh, uh, kind of get it and understand what, responsibilities they have and what they do and you know one of the, the best plays of the year that miles made was up at wyoming when he chased down the, the i think it was a 59 yard run yeah and he came from the back side and was blitzing the run went all the way away and he catches the guy down there i don't know what yard line it was but that was an impressive football play because uh you know there's a kid that's uh given everything he is for his teammates and for his team and and uh, he's had, you know, some uh, big games for us. And this, like uh, any other, he's got to step up and do that again. All right. Uh, for a game like this, again, we talked about it. You're going to worry about you guys. Get done what you need to do. Get done what you can get done. I imagine people are coming up to you with suggestions saying, hey, coach, TCU, let's let it all hang out. Trick plays. Let's go for it on four down. Let's do all of that stuff, you know. You know, I, I might remind people, you go for it on fourth down against TCU all day, you, you could give them a bunch of short fields. I guess my point is, how much of this has got to be just the regular Aztec game plan? And then how many little things do you need to maybe mix into a game like this? Well, you know, you always have what your bread and butter is and what your backbone of your team is from a kicking game perspective to offense and defense. And, uh, you know, th those are going to be the sound principles. I mean, uh, surprise, we're going to run the power play. You know, I mean, yeah. we're going to give it back to number 13 and run the power play. But, you know, uh, y you always look at what the other team may give you. That's always part of it. You know, if you want to attack a protection this way or if you want to cover routes a different way. And, and from an offensive perspective, it's the same thing. You know, uh, they like man coverage and quarters coverage. Is there ways that you can uh, take advantage of it? So, But we're going to be who we are. I mean, we, we are going to be uh, – uh, the San Diego State Aztec Warriors. Seven and two. Anybody in this room thinking about an upset Saturday at 1 o'clock in TCU? Just wanted to double check. Hey, thanks to our uh, on-site engineer, Mr. Kevin Boyle. Thank you to Polly and Scott handling GoAztecs.com. Our girl, Lindsay, who takes care of all of us at the Claim Jumper. Kevin Finnerty back in the studio. Mitch and the promotion staff. For the coach, Brady Hoke. Chris Sello, the pregame show is at noon Saturday, and we'll kick it off 1 o'clock right here Saturday, the Aztecs and the Horned Frogs. Thanks for coming out to Claim Jumper, everybody. Glad you were with us tonight on the Aztec Coaches Show from Learfield Sports and AM600 Kogo. Good night. All right, uh, we got uh, we got a Kurt Morrison jersey uh, ahead of time here. Tonight's trivia question. Thanks again, everybody, for coming out, and don't forget to take care of your weight staff. I don't know if this is a tough question or not. Sometimes I think they're tough, and then they're easy, and then sometimes I think they're easy, and nobody gets them. Uh, the highest ranked team until Saturday. The highest ranked team San Diego State has beaten uh, is Iowa State. Yeah, that was back in 1981. I was at the game, by the way. Uh, no, tr no trick stuff, Coach, but we tried an onside kick on the opening kickoff. We covered and then blew them right out of Qualcomm Stadium. Just a little thought. Uh, <laughs> who quarterbacked the Aztecs to that victory over Iowa State, the highest-ranked team San Diego State has ever beat? Just trying to listen. If I hear the name, you'll win the jersey. Not Todd Santos, not Mark Calda. Still trying to hear it. Anybody? No. Not Todd Santos. Not Mark Calda. Sorry. Not Jesse Bradis. Not Dan McGuire. This guy went on to play in the NFL for the Buffalo Bills. Not Dennis Shaw, who also played for the Buffalo Bills. That was a buddy of mine because I went to school at this time. Nobody remembers him. Craig Penrose. No, not Craig Penrose. 
Not David Lowry, no. David Lowry not right in 1981. Yes, who said Kofler? Thank you, Matt Kofler. Quarterback back the Aztecs to that victory uh, back in 1981. And you all know what my question is going to be next week. The answer next week is going to be Ryan Lindley, because the question is going to be which quarterback led the Aztecs to the victory over their highest ranked opponent now. Thank you. Thanks for coming out again, everybody. We'll see you Wednesday night. Take care. Next Wednesday night. Enjoy the game, Saturday.